up guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and let's recap and review summer house martha's vineyard this is season two episode I want to say six. So let's get no, into no. Sometimes before we get into it, we get a little spicy just a little bit. And I only have three things or three spicy topics to talk with you guys today about. First up, y'all, we're getting a reunion, which I'm really excited about. I know a lot of people were petitioning, you know, Andy and the network to give the girls a reunion. And we're getting one. Um, and, I, and we found that out on April the 22nd. Andy posted, you know, his tweet that he always tweets before. Before he does the reunions where he's like I'm about to we're prepping for this reunion send me your um send me your tweets and let me know where you from and a lot of the questions were actually good some of them was just messy <laughs> but they were good questions so I'm excited to see how this reunion will pan out I'm also excited to see what the you know the cast will wear I'm hoping fingers crossed that they kind of like called each other up or had to hit the group chat and say what color we wearing because y'all know how I love a good themed reunion because when I look at the original summer house none of their out outfits ever eat none of them ever eat and they all look like they're going to different functions they dress the same as like the girls for Beverly Hills and for OC it's never cohesive and it bothers me it really bothers me. But I'm hoping that this reunion is not like a wrap up reunion. And what I mean by that is I remember in like the early like in the early 2000s, maybe the 2010s, when there were a lot of reality shows coming out and they would only be only be like a seat, like one season or two seasons. And then we would get a reunion and it was like it was like a wrap up of like the whole entire series and they would get canceled and we would never hear from the like cast ever again. So I'm hoping this is not what it is. But when I looked up the original summer house, it looks like they didn't get a reunion till their second season as well. And then let me see. They didn't have one for season three. They didn't have one for season four, but that was during the pandemic season five. They got a reunion season six. They got a reunion Season seven is when I came in. <laughs> season seven, they got a reunion and they'll probably have one for season eight. So I'm hoping this is a good sign that we're going to get a season three. Um, the next thing is Alex. So Alex was on Watch What Happens Live last night with Candy. I'm not going to lie. He he was really shooting his shot. Like, but, but I'm not mad at him. He was trying his best to promote his music to Candy. And I mean, like... If you sitting by Miss Candy Burst that always keeps the jobs and employs people, do what you do, Alex. Do what you do. Hopefully she checks out your music and she can, like, you know, push your career up, okay? So uh, what got people talking is Andy asked um Alex how he felt about summer so I didn't watch the last summer house um the last time the summer house people were on there I know I saw Bria and Shanice and I saw clips of that but I didn't see the clips of Jordan and summer but I guess Jordan and summer were on watch what happens live the previous times and I guess Andy asked summer what what would she rate her sex with Alex and she said a five well Andy asked Alex how do you feel about that so I'm gonna play that audio for you guys so hold up Summer rated your hookup. Did you see her on this show? Yeah, yeah. Did you see what she rated your hookup as? Yeah, yeah. She, she gave it a five. Yeah. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your hookup? I'm not going to rate it, but I do think it's really rich that she came up here and said that in days before. She was leaving me voice notes like a crazy ex girlfriend. Okay. Summer rated. <laughs> So if you didn't hear it, basically Andy asked um, Alex, you know, Summer says y'all y'all session, you know, y'all smash session was only a five. And Alex was like, that's kind of funny when Girly was sending me voice notes like a crazy ex-girlfriend a couple of days before I came up here. So what is it? I said, girl, yeah, what is it, Summer? <laughs> We're going to talk about Miss Summer. We're going to talk about Miss Summer. And the other thing is Andy asking everybody how they feel about Candace. And the Summer House, and I got to give credit to the Martha's Vineyard cast because anytime they have been asked about Candace, um, I don't know if they if he asked Jordan and Summer or Brie or Shanice about Candace. I've only seen him ask the guys. They've been real because Preston said, we love Candace. Okay, and then Alex even said this. He said, Candace has given the cast of Martha's Vineyard a lot of love. And so Candace 
saw this posted by Jay's reality blog and she quote tweeted and says, and I mean it, they not going to play with her. And Andy, stop asking everybody that question. Either two things you want, either you want them to bash Candace because you don't really like her or two, this is your way of trying to be like, okay, people like you girl, come back to the show. But either way, she's not a part of the show anymore. It doesn't seem like you're going to be inviting her to watch what happens live the same way you invited Candy, so stop asking people about the lady. Move on. Move on, Andy, because it's giving Preston distress, okay? Y'all. So the episode opens up, and we see um, Summer on the phone with her grandmother that she calls Nana. And so she's on the phone with her, and we find out that, I guess, the uh, her grandmother is having, like, some type of surgery, and it seems, like, pretty invasive because um, she was explaining how she was uh, a little scared. And then the grandma's like, well, how are you doing? And Summer's like, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm just kind of, like, overwhelmed with some things and the grandmother's like well have you talked to your friends and she's just like I don't want to be a burden and then she starts crying because Summer's like I feel like I give so much and don't get it in return and then we get Summer's backstory basically so her mother is an addict she has been given you know basically been passed around to her family to emotionally unavailable adults finally I guess her grandparents were like give us this baby and they adopted her um She's also struggling with the fact that because they did like a flashback. It was like two days before this actual scene where she expresses to everyone that like she doesn't know who her father is, that the person she thought was her dad is actually not her dad, that she just found out. I guess she reached out to the man and was like, hey, I'm like such and such trying to reconnect with that person. And they were like, girl, there's no way I could be your dad. And so then she went back to her mom and her mom basically was like, oh, yeah, It's probably from this, your dad's probably this guy from a one night stand. So Summer is just like, it's it's a lot with her because when production is like, well, why don't you like share your feelings? She basically is like, she doesn't want to seem like a burden to her friends. And that's sad because she's probably always felt like that as a child. Like she's probably always felt like a burden because you know, her mom's an addict and you, and depending on what type of addict, she probably has like, Bert, like, you know, that addiction has probably been a lot for her family to wrap their heads around. Maybe her mom has done things to people in her family that causes them problems. And then it's like, here I am, you know, just a kid. And then I'm getting passed to like other adults who don't have time for me or can help me process my feelings that I'm dealing with the fact that my mom's an addict and she's not in my life like she should be. And you're getting passed around, passed around, passed around. And maybe she has tried to open up to the adults around her. But as a child, if you keep getting rejected by when you share your emotions, eventually you're just going to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it seems like that's what Summer has kind of told herself. Like, once you tell people how you feel, you're going to be looked at as a burden and you don't want to be that. She's probably taught herself as a kid, if I'm quiet, if I don't do too much and I stay like here, people will be okay with me being around. And that is saying, I ain't going to lie. Like, I was like, dang. That girl, you need therapy. Like, and I and I'm not even like trying to be like funny or shady. Like, therapy will probably really benefit Summer. Like, cause that's a lot to carry around. And you could tell that she has anger issues because I think she's afraid of her emotions. Because I feel like anger is such an easy, like, it's such an easy emotion to go to. Just get mad at something. But like, and you can like justify why you're feeling this way because I'm mad instead of being like, no, that really hurt me. And then like sit down and really process it. But she's probably the type of person that's like afraid to really sit with those emotions because she probably thinks that like once she starts crying, she can't cut it off. (laughs) And there's a lot of people out there, myself included sometimes, you know, I think crying is annoying. (laughs) <laughs> it's so annoying the you constantly rubbing your eyes they get puffy all this area around here is sore your throat start hurting it's annoying so if I don't gotta cry I don't want to cry <laughs> even though I do it so quickly so um she so then we see her get off the phone with her grandmother we find out that it's couples weekend and so the first event is going to be thrown by Preston we end up seeing Simon roll up he in this flamingo outfit Nick had me tickle when he was like first of all where did you buy that and why why 
questions, pretty much. <laughs> Choices. Um, but yeah, Simon and Bria embrace. They're having like a moment. Bria's like, are you crying? And he, Simon's like, no. Like, stop trying to make this more than what it is. But Simon and Bria are probably meant for each other because she was already complaining and like, <laughs> like picking at that man when they were in the truth booth talking about you know we haven't spoken in a month and it's his fault and he's like no because so i be calling you and you be talking about you're you're gonna call me back you're tired that's a you thing and i was like y'all are probably meant to be because i feel like bria is a lot but i think simon enjoys that about her and he can like he understands her so like Kudos to her and him, okay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Peace and love and happiness, all right? So then we end up seeing Donald, which is Preston's boyfriend, well, now fiance. He's cute. Donald is cute. Donald seems like he would be a fun time. Like, he meshed with the group well, the same way Simon was able to, like, kick it with the group and everybody be fine. The person who was having issues is Natalie, okay? And I, I'm going to give to episode seven to say what I really want to say about Natalie, but I'm just going to talk about... I'm just going to talk about what I saw when she first came in. Natalie is given insecure and intimidated by the people that, by the women in that house because Amir goes to pick her up. And also Amir's commentary about Natalie is not helpful either. Like you're feeding that narrative even more that your girlfriend is insecure and easily intimidated and that she doesn't trust you, <laughs> sir, because he goes and picks her up from the airport. They're in the car and he's talking about how Summer is like touchy feely. And Natalie's like, yeah, I, I picked that up and I told you I didn't like that. And I'm like, girl, don't nobody want a mirror. <laughs> don't, he's finding out that a mirror is five foot four. Girl, don't, I'm five foot two and a half and I don't want him. <laughs> I need you to be at least five foot seven and taller. <laughs> taller like girl nobody wants that man nobody wants that man and production why were y'all zooming so close to that man's ass y'all were like amir was doing stretches in his butt just in his butt <laughs> disrespectful the same way y'all was zooming in on preston when he had those like you know the underwear without the covering in the back just booty out and y'all was just like i said can y'all get off get off the men's booties okay so she's in the car they're talking they pull up everyone's like hey so while we see natalie and amir pull up to the house we see everybody else is on like um bria's balcony area and they're talking bria is pressed for phil to be around and i don't understand why I'm like, I do not understand why. But I guess she got Simon in on it because Simon was like, I like laughter. I like laughter. Can we invite Phil? Because I need some laughter. And nobody could understand what he was saying. And then they were like, oh, you mean laughter? And we're like, okay, cool. We also find out that Preston and uh, Donald are about to move in together. And I like the way everybody, like, the good thing about this cast is, like, everyone seems comfortable to be around each other. Like, they're not like no one feel and, and maybe that's why they didn't want Phil because Phil kind of gives like he might be toxic, you know, given that toxic masculinity. But it seems like everyone enjoys each other's company company. And it seems like um, the other people who are part of like the LGBTQIA community feel comfortable being around a bunch of like a bunch of straight people. And I think that's a nice vibe. But. You know, Preston is like, he can come. We talked. I'm not that, I'm not that pressed about him anymore. Like we said our piece. He was like, the only thing about it is Phil wants attention. And that's my thing. I like you be doing too much. And I just need to know how you going to act moving forward. Like, are you going to be doing a lot to get everybody's attention? And if that's the case, then I don't really need to be around you. Since Preston told um, Bria that Phil can come, she's eager as a beaver to go um, FaceTime him. So she's facing time, facing, FaceTiming Phil. <laughs> because Phil and Mariah are now in the vineyard. Well, she didn't know when she FaceTimed Phil that Mariah was in the car. So Phil is on FaceTime like this. And then he was like, oh, Mariah's right here because she was like, what are you going to tell Mariah? And he was, and like, she was like, oh, oh. And it's like, Bria's acting like, 
Mariah put her in a headlock and was just wop, 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 like just hitting her. I'm like, girl, she shoved clothes in your chest. On top of that, Summer shoved you and you and like, like you were okay with it. Like, and now it's given that Bri is doing this for a storyline because I'm just like the way she was easily, like it was so easy for her to make up with Mariah. I was just like, girl, go on somewhere. Shanice comes in the room and she's like, Ooh, when she see Mariah, like she's shocked that they're on the phone together. So we start to see everyone starts to get ready for the actual, um, you know, cocktail hour party that, um, Preston is throwing. So we see that Preston and his boyfriend leave to go to the event. Cause they was like, we got to be on time. Okay. We're going to be on time. Everybody else is getting ready. You see summer and Jordan, like they're in the bathroom. We can't see them, but we can hear the audio. And Jordan is like, how you feel about like me Natalie again. And summer is just like, I'm kind of over meeting new people, especially a person that I met before that wasn't really nice. And I was like, at first I felt like they were kind of pushing it. But after seeing the way Natalie interacts it's it's giving a kind of it's giving a vibe okay it's, it's giving a vibe all right and I feel like only black women understand this vibe that Natalie is kind of giving the girls okay so um the girls are getting ready we see Natalie and Amir set up because they're going to take Jasmine's room and I guess Jasmine is sleeping in Noelle's room so um Shanice and Summer are walking downstairs and Amir was like, oh, y'all already about to leave. And he was like, she was like, yeah. <clears throat> and I think he wanted them to go talk to Natalie, but all of them were just kind of like, we good. <laughs> we good on her. And so they're walking down the steps. Amir has it in his mind that everybody wanted him. I said, the only person that probably was interested in you was Shanice. And she was like, oh, she thought you were cute. But even Shanice wasn't really giving you that energy the way I feel like Shanice was giving Nick <laughs> that energy at the end of this episode like she didn't give you that Jordan curved you so what is it did you did you lie to this girl and tell her everybody in the house wanted to like get in bed with you because most of the girls don't even feature you like that the person that be getting all the all the all the boxes is Alex you do you don't get nothing from nobody <laughs> Okay. So, um, he was like, I'm doing what Jordan, you know, what, um, Natalie wants. And that's staying away from Jordan. Jordan don't want you as much as Jordan gets on my nerves. She's been very honest and upfront. Like, I don't, you not my type. I don't want you. She curved you last season. So why are you acting like she wanted a piece of you, sir? And why is your girlfriend so insecure that she's like, you know, stay away from her. If he's with you, then, girl, I just, she getting on my, Natalie getting on my nerves. She's getting on my nerves. She's getting on my nerves. <laughs> but I, she, because I'm, I don't understand how you could be, like, you're with him. He's parading you around like a show pony. Like, he is happy to say, Natalie's my girl. She's a bad bitch. You know, she, she challenges me and I'm very intelligent. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Amir, you give such himbo vibes. The reason you probably have gotten far in your life is you're nice to look at and you're a kind, like, you know, you seem like a kind and nice person to a certain extent because you're lame that you won't apologize publicly to Mariah, but you give, like, you give least threatening black person. So let's not do that, sir. <laughs> let's not talk about she and she she challenges me and also I said if I was Natalie I would be weary of Amir because Amir gives he got with you for a come up especially when we get down to down where she explains how they both started their careers together girl and he's on your team now <laughs> it's giving he saw that you was moving up and he said let me hop on that wave <laughs> You got to watch them. You got to watch these men. But okay. So, um, Jordan, like, like I said, Summer and Shanice, like, walk past. And she's like, they're not even interested in going to see where Natalie is at. Then you see Jordan come out. And Amir's like, oh, do you want to say something to Natalie? Or, like, we're about to leave. Something like that. And Jordan just was looking at him like, mm, not really. Natalie awkwardly, like, tiptoes like she running back into the room and she immediately like is like fixing her hair and you can tell she's uncomfortable <laughs> and she's intimidated because then she's on the phone and then she says something in Spanish where she's like she tells Amir like oh your phone someone's on your phone and he's like okay I'm coming and I was like "Ooh, Natalie that's not a good look that's not a good look so they all get ready 
And they're all heading to um, Preston's event. The decor was lacking. The food looked good, you know, with the, you know, the the dumplings. The su- I love me a good sushi boat. Um, it just, it wasn't, I was like, where where's the canopies? Like, I thought they, they could have gave more. They could have gave more. But it was nice to see it wasn't just the group. Like, we saw some of Jordan's friends who, I guess, flew in. We saw, I think, a few friends um, from Preston. Like, it, it seemed like a really nice event. Everyone was talking and getting to know each other and just having a good time. We see Summer get a text from her grandma saying, I miss you. And Summer texts us back, like, I miss you too. I will, you know, I'll try my best to call you back. So you can already tell that, like, her mind is somewhere else because, She's already worried about her grandmother doing her surgery. And she's like, she's overwhelmed. She's overwhelmed and she doesn't feel like she can talk to anybody because she doesn't want to burden them. So she even looked like she wasn't really like she, she, you could tell that Summer was trying to like mingle with people, but she really wasn't like there. So then we see, um, what's her name? Mariah and uh, Phil come in. Mariah look good. Mariah look good. And everyone's like, oh, oh, my gosh, Jasmine's excited because luckily her and Mariah fixed their problems. And I thought it was cute when Mariah was rubbing Jasmine's stomach. And we know Mariah is a mom as well. And so I think that's great that they mend their, mended their relationship because now that means, like, Jasmine has someone that she can talk to who understands what it means to be a parent and, you know, and probably has a different perspective because I think her son is a lot older. Um, well, not a lot older. It seems like when she was on the phone with him last year, he he gave like every bit of like six or seven. So he sounded so young and cute and sweet. And so I was happy that their relationship was, they were able to fix their relationship. But then you have Nick and his confessional being like, feeling me not the same. That's basically what he said. He basically said, me and that, me and that man, we not the same. He said, I go to the Kentucky Derby, Wimbledon, London, South Africa, Tokyo, France. He's just a stranger on the side of the street. <laughs> and some people was like, Nick is giving classes. We know classism is bad, but also I need a lot of y'all to start letting people know we not the same. We are not the same. It is okay to tell somebody, you and me, we're not the same. Our goals, our accomplishments, the way we think, it ain't the same. And it might be a lot higher than you. <laughs> like, I don't have a problem with that man saying that. Because I'd have been, he was looking at feel like, and my thing is also like, what Phil did to Nick, I feel like was the most disrespectful. You pooped in that man's toilet on purpose because you felt like he stole your room. And then you basically told him to go flush it like he was supposed to be a bitch and do what you say. So I can tell somebody, first of all, I'm not that nasty nor disrespectful. On top of that, you you can't sit in the at the table that I sit at or the circles that I'm in. We not the same, bro. I don't have a problem with that, okay? But I do say the Kentucky Derby ain't all of that. I've been. And it's cute. You know, I, I got dressed up, had my little hat and everything. The best thing about the Derby was the drinks. The food was lacking, but them drinks, them so, drinks was it. Now everyone's realizing that Phil and Mariah are there. They're, everyone's, you know, you know, the people who are like, <laughs> are, uh, you got Jordan basically saying to her friends that she's going to stay over here. She's not going to go near Phil. She, we find out that Phil, I guess, tried to contact her during the off season, basically being like, LOL, are you still mad at me? And she never responded in the DMs. She tried to act like Phil, like, tried to talk to her on Twitter, but I feel like if he did try to talk to her on Twitter, they would have shown that. So I think he only messaged her in the DMs on Instagram. And I get Jordan's feelings of being like, eh, yeah, I, I ain't got it for Phil. But I also feel like Jordan needs to take responsibility that you instigated that situation between you and Phil. Phil was already exhibiting, like, hostile, aggressive behavior. You just found out he got into it with Amir and with Alex. He pooped in Nick's toilet it on purpose and was telling him to do that like to go flush it and you went into that kitchen while that man was sitting there looking surly as ever basically arguing with him because he called you pretty and then you called him a bitch and didn't expect him to like come at you and my thing is I'm not negating that Nick's behavior was wrong because it was really it was wrong it was wrong the way he came into the house was it was disrespectful. But my thing about it is, is Jordan knew what she was doing, in my opinion. Like, you can clearly tell that's like someone 
messing with a hornet's nest to me. Like you clearly know hornets sting. You clearly see that this man is drunk and being aggressive and you went over there with a stick and whacked the shit out of it and then got mad when the hornets tried to attack you. That made like you have to me, you have to take ownership that you put yourself in that situation when all you had to do was walk past him or ignore him for calling you pretty or or whatever he called you and just kept it kept it pushing. Like if I see that's my thing, if I see people being mad aggressive when when they're drunk or throwing up, I stay away. I stay away because I don't want to be roped into that. That's like running towards a burning building and not expecting yourself to get burned. That makes no sense to me. So she ain't got it for Phil, but I wonder because it seems like they're going to bring Phil and Mariah back for season three. If they get a season three, I wonder if she's just going to have to suck it up because everybody else is pretty much making amends with Phil. Preston and Phil made amends. The guy somewhat made amends with him. Like she's the only one, but I don't know. I feel like they might be okay with having Phil around mainly because it's like Jordan fix it. They probably gonna tell Jordan either like, Y'all have a conversation and move past it or it just it is what it is. I, I feel like that's what production would do, especially because Jordan is not a fan favorite. I don't think they would give her any special treatment about that. And it seems like there is a some people are like they don't want Phil around. But then I've seen like just as many people said they're cool with Phil being around. So, mm. So we see Phil have a conversation with the guys. He actually gets them all together. So it's Phil, Nick, Preston, Amir, and Alex. And Phil tries to blame like his attitude on him, you know, drinking tequila. And he was like, tequila is expensive. But basically it seems like Nick, not Nick, uh, Phil was nervous. He got drunk. And then I don't know if he's an angry drunk or if he's just like, he didn't like, I, I, my mindset is this, and I don't care how people feel. I feel like Phil either got amped up by production being like, oh, you're the wild card, come in and shake some things up. And I also think that Phil was nervous. Phil gives, he overcompensates. So I feel like he was nervous. He came into the house. You know, he's like, you know, he's trying to make a big splash. He's drunk. And then things, I think he realized things weren't going his way. And instead of just kind of like tapering his feelings, he lashed out. And I know when you're drunk, some people don't have control over that. Most people don't. And I think that's what really happened. And, but it's also kind of like what the guy said, they, like you're trying to blame it on the alcohol. Amir was saying that, you know, these my boys and I'm a ride or die for them. And I feel like you was in the house being a bully. I don't think he was being a bully. I just think Phil was being obnoxious and an asshole and they clocked it. Like they clocked with his behavior. Like he, I don't think Phil really thought the house was going to band together and be like, get him out of there. And that's what happened. And that's what it was. But they ended up coming to like a mutual agreement. Nick ain't really got it for Phil either because Nick kind of looked at Phil like, okay, cute, but I don't, we ain't got to be around each other. Cause Nick pretty much feels like Phil had a whole entire year to have a better speech or a better pitch about, you know, what he did and take ownership. And I think Nick's analogy was like, you know, when you give in like a book report and you get a month to read the book and make the presentation, it's clear as day that it feels like Phil did it like the day before and he still wasn't prepared because you got a year. And that's true. Like, I think Phil should have just been, you know what? I messed up last summer. I messed up. You know, I was nervous. I came in the house. I brought the alcohol and then I, my emotions got the best of me and I offended y'all. And I'm really sorry about that. I would like to move forward with y'all. If he would have just said that, I bet you they all would have been like, you know what? You took ownership. You ain't blaming on the liquor and we moving forward. But I think Phil is probably struggling with the fact that like that behavior is you. Cause he keep being like, well, that's not me. And it's like, nah, bro, that, 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 that is you. That's you, sir. So then we have a conversation between um, uh, Mariah and Bria and they pretty much squash it. Basically, Mariah was like, you know, I didn't know that you didn't put the clothes in there. I found out by way that it was Amir. We see that Amir and Mariah had a text message conversation and Mariah once wanted Amir to like apologize publicly. Amir and his confessionals was like, I did it by accident and I don't feel like I need to apologize when the whole house wanted her gone because she put her hands on, Mar on Bria. And it's like, yeah, 
up, but you were the catalyst to that. That's why I think Amir is lame as hell. He is lame as hell because it's like, he's talking about like, you know, Natalie, like I'm mature, I'm intelligent. And if you are intelligent, like you were saying you are, then you would be honest about your situation. If you were mature, like you're saying you, you are, you would have just been like, you know what? I, I messed up. I, you know, I didn't step in when I could have, and it caused this big hoopla and this big fight between these two people, and I was the catalyst for that, and I apologize to both Mariah and Bria for that. I should have took that ownership, and we moving forward. Like, it's not that hard to apologize for an accident. I know it's uncomfortable, but there's plenty of times where I've apologized for an accident and been like, that was not my intentions, and I'm sorry, and I keep it moving. Like, and the fact that he can't admit that, I was like, yeah, you're lame. <laughs> you're so lame. And, like, a lot of people are like, they want Bria and, and Summer gone. I always say it's Amir for me because Amir gives little brother energy. And then finding out that Amir is, like, the youngest in the house, I think he's, like, 27. And I was just like, uh, it makes sense. But no, it doesn't make sense because at 27, I'm not giving that a pass. Yeah, and I'm not getting that back. Amir just gives kid energy, and to be 27 and still exuding that type of energy is annoying to me. It is. He's a himbo. And if you don't know what a himbo is, Google it, but it's basically what people be calling bimbos. Pretty, and you're just pretty, and you're un, you're stupid. You're, like, goofy and cute, and, and that's what people like about you, and that's why people keep you around. That's basically, because I was just like, Amir, just apologize. Just say you're sorry and and keep it pushing. But Mariah and Bria move forward. They both, you know, clap each other up. We found out that I guess Mariah had reached out several times to Bria. So I really feel like this whole situation was a storyline at this point. Everybody goes back to the house. I did see a couple of people being like, well, it's couples weekend. Where is Nick's girlfriend? But we do see a scene of Nick on the phone, I think on FaceTime with Tasia. And Preston was like, oh, I'll see you tomorrow. Because she was like, I, I hate that I'm not there hanging out with y'all. So I guess we'll see her on the next episode, which should be cool. And so they get back to the house. Everybody is kind of tired from the, the, like, you know, being at the day party. Because they was in that sun. Because there was no, like I said, they needed decor. They needed canopies and stuff like that. Or a cute little tent or something something so they get to the house and everyone starts getting ready for the freak nick party we see that jordan invited her friends preston invited his friends so everyone's there we get a <laughs> some of the outfits were cute like and this other thing jordan's wig that she had at preston's event was actually cute it had a bang it was fl i said okay why are we not wearing that wig why are jordan needs to stay away from wigs with a part because the wig that she has in her confessional burn it and then the wig that she had on for the Freaknik party, cute. I mean, I said, Jordan, you probably would not be self-conscious about, you know, losing your hair. I mean, you probably still will always be that way because like you said, hair to her means a lot, but you probably would still be a, like a little bit more confident if you had units that weren't good. Like you, you don't be plucking them parts. If you're not going to pluck the parts, cause it, it's, it's tedious work. Okay. I done did it a couple of times, sis. Get you a cute little bang wig. Get you a cute little bang wig or get one of them girls to pluck it for you and like, you know, do the the, the swoops of the of the baby hairs and call it a day. Because I'm like, you you look cute with certain wigs on. It's them other wigs that be you be looking disheveled. And that's your fault. I know you make you make enough money. To, and I also understand that there's somebody in New York, and like I said before, that's either black, like Latin or Hispanic white or any other ethnicity Asian that lives in New York that probably would have loved to make a unit for you and then you like you know sponsor it or like let people know they did your wig especially if it look cute so I'm fix it Jesus so they're at the house everybody's getting ready girl when I tell you let's talk about Nick Avelli <laughs> Nick look good <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I said, ooh, ooh. I'm normally not into that many tats. Like, I have tattoos, so it doesn't bother me. But sometimes it be too much. But that, that was a lot. But that he looked good. He looked good. As long as he didn't put them on his face. But I said, ooh. He walked in. We see 
Alex put on his tag. He got had the, the tags. Then Nick puts on his tags. You know, he came in with them bottles. The person's reaction that sent me was a love who I think was Jordan's friend. <laughs> Nick walked around that corner. A love was like, oh. <laughs> I know a love was, it was in their head being like, is that the man I saw? This early of the day because because what is this was that underneath the jacket like their reaction was like Ooh. <laughs> i was so weak i was so weak because i said i said me and you both because i said oh and then everybody was like ah oh. and then noah noel was like girl this is not nick this is nick of Valley. and then i said Great. preston was like preston and jordan was like that is not nick i said girl girl because I said, maybe this Shanice was acting like a bird, such a bird. Shanice was like, oh, you making me wet. I said, Shanice, this man got a whole girlfriend. Stop being a thought box. <laughs> she was like, these tats. She said, he tall. He got these tats. This is my type of man. I said, Shanice. I'm not going to lie, because I said, I get it. I get it, because he do look good. He, I said, Nick with tats is a vibe, okay? Is a vibe. I said, if I saw Nick at the club, <laughs> I wouldn't shoot my shot, because I'm not that girl. I don't shoot my shot. But I definitely would have been giving him the eye the whole entire night. <laughs> I'd have been like, ooh. Me and my friends probably would have been either texting or talking to her. I'd have been like, girl. Okay, so but a love's reaction. A <laughs> love said, "Ooh, <laughs> it was the." And then looking back, like having trying to like have confirmation, like is that really the person I saw earlier at the party? So everyone is like shocked by Nick, and they're all having a good time. Like it, like I like the fact that they were able to invite more people because they were all having a. Everyone's dancing. We see more of Jordan's friends. They're all like drinking, eating, and having a good time. And then we see upstairs, it's the two wet blankets, Amir and um, Natalie. And Amir's trying to help Natalie do something. She's like doing her makeup. And then you can hear them screaming. Everyone downstairs being like, hey, you know. And she's like, I can't be a part of that. I said, what's that supposed to mean? And then Amir's like, oh, you don't have to. You don't have to be. And then she's like, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm like... What, what, why'd you come in this house then? What, like you came to a vacation house. I know you watched previous, like the first season. Shanice was naked all the time. They were drinking all the time. They were twerking in bushes, girl. They, they were having fun. People were getting naked. Like, so what, like, what do you mean you can't be a part of it? And that's why a lot of people been, how, look, that's why I said I'm waiting till next episode to say what I got to, next episode to say what I got to say. But everyone was looking at you because I was like, you making me feel one way, Natalie, about you. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that that's not what it is and that you just insecure and like, you know, and intimidated, but you, you giving me the feels that you another way. And like I said, black women know. We know, and I'm trying to give you, I don't want to put that on you, but it's kind of giving that, Natalie. And if you black, you know, you know. Because I was like, what do you mean? You acting like the, the Latin community wasn't that freak, Nick. I've seen some people's T.O.'s and T.A.'s posting that they went to freak, Nick, too. So I know they was out there, okay? They was turning up like everybody else, okay? So I'm like, even her outfit was lame. Amir's outfit was lame. I was like, girl, be the part. Be the part. Like you can't, you, you're telling me you couldn't Google nineties, like Latin girls. And cause I, you know, you go on Pinterest, Pinterest is that girl type in anything. It's pictures coming up left and right. And you could have came with a better outfit than that. And she was really doing her makeup. I said, first of all, Natalie, can't nobody see your face. Y'all are about to be in the dark by a pool with strobe lights and neon lights. And y'all are going to be getting in the, in the pool. Why are you putting on makeup to get in the pool? Yeah. Lady getting on my nerves. She's getting on my nerves. So, you know, they all go out to the to the pool. They're dancing. They're having a good time. My thing with summer houses, y'all got to stop trying to educate people because y'all look slow. Like, I think the Brooke Ashley pointed it out. I don't want nobody educating me about Freak Nick when y'all didn't know who Arthur Ashe was. I said, yeah, because even I heard about him at church. 
but I went to a black church and they took African-American history very seriously. And even I had a white teacher in high school. He didn't play about history. He, you had to know your people <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't care. So I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I get why they do that mainly because they know summer house is watched by a broad audience. It's not just, you know, black people watching it. So I understand them wanting to give people that, 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 you know, look into the community, but I don't know. It doesn't come off genuine. It comes off like forced and it's just kind of like, girl, I feel like a lot of people know where freak Nikki is, you know, but that's just me, you know, I'm a nineties kid. So I, you know, I was born in it like during the nineties. So, I mean, like I couldn't go to, I was a child. Like I was, was I a child? I was a baby when freak Nick happened. So I, I could never go. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I I could never go, you know. Only like so. Um, I was just like, yeah, and the party looked fun. This is like one of the parties that they had that looked actually fun. And I think that's because they had other people there. So then that's when things went downhill. Yeah, things went things went downhill. So they're all having fun. You see Shanice and all of them, you know, being fake. I don't know. I feel like Summer and Noel was playing. Shanice was giving real groupie vibes. Touching on. I said, girl, <laughs> he got a girl. And she was like, come here, daddy. Come here. Daddy. I said, Shanice. <laughs> but they were all having a good time. They were like, you know, Shanice was like, you know, Alex is everything. But then he opens his mouth. And then I realized, not Alex. She was like, then he opens his mouth. And I realized it's Nick. And I'm like, yeah, but he still look good, though. He still look good. <laughs> a love was like, I just, it was just the way <laughs> they was like, oh, like, girl. So um, they're at the party. You see Natalie, Amir, and like everyone starts crowding around the hot tub. They're in the hot tub together. Like some people went inside to go put on like their swimsuits and all of that stuff. And they're asking questions about Natalie and Amir. Amir talking about he want to be engaged to Natalie. And this is when I was like, Natalie, you need to watch Amir. Because like when she was like, oh, we started our careers together. But at the at Preston's um, party, she explained how she is like a like a high end realtor. Because they both are realtors. Like what, she basically says what Amir does in a year. I do in like a month or two months it was kind of condescending but also I like I kind of let it go when she explained that he jumped on her team and I said girl you need to watch him because it's given he got with you because he saw you moving up in the ladder like not is it up a ladder up in the ladder up the ladder up the ladder and to the roof do 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 but yeah it's given that he attached himself to you because he's he's he know you put in work that's what it's kind of giving me because I was like girl I would not get with somebody who can't match me that's what my grand that's what my, my my poppy has always said to me and my sister he has always said you marry somebody that's equally to you or above he says you never go below he said you never go below so um, everyone's like, mm, why are y'all already about to get engaged? Y'all haven't been together that long. And Shanice is the one that's real vocal. She was like, Amir just wants to be loved and that's okay. But is he really sure that he wants to like be engaged to Natalie? Cause that's a big step, which is true. So then we see Natalie and Amir and like a few other people go inside. And I think Preston as well. Donald is on that couch, knocked out. I mean, he was, he was in that good sleep. I think that boy was in REM sleep. And so we see Alex, Natalie, and Amir trying to wake him up to like put him in the room. And he's like, I'm good. But you could tell he was like, day. <laughs> so, oh, that boy was knocked out. So, um, did y'all see Natalie get in the bed with her wet, like swimsuit on? I said, Natalie. Nat Girl, did, you need to take a shower. I, I don't know how people sleep in swimsuits. Like, like you are, you getting in a, in a bed with a swimsuit on girl and it's wet too. go in that, go in that shower. Cause y'all pool water is not clean. I mean, chlorine, you know, it's supposed to be, no, it's not go in there and put some soap on your, on your body. So, um, what happened? 
So they, and we go back outside and they play and never have I ever, ever. You can clearly tell everyone's been drinking. Summer is drunk. Summer hears Bria say like, you're scary. And then Summer tells Bria, girl, get the F out the pool and like, let's go. And everyone's looking at Summer like, girl, what are you talking about? So then Summer says she thought Bria says something disrespectful, which I'm like, it's the same thing that happened with Bria when she thought Nick said something disrespectful to her uh, when he was trying to tell her about Milo last episode. So then everyone's looking at Summer like, girl, you doing a lot. And Preston is like, yeah, chill out. So then Summer gets back in the pool. She apologizes to Bria. She does the whole like, I love you. And that's how you know when Summer is drunk. She's like, you know, I'm, and then you hear Summer apologize and they move forward. But then when they get back into the house, you see Shanice, Bria, and Noelle in a room together and they're talking about the situation. Summer is being like real aggressive. You end up seeing Mariah and Alex by the... Uh, by the sink the kitchen sink and Summer's like there's four bathrooms why are you doing that and Alex is like why are you yelling at me and she's like I'm not yelling at you I'm just asking a question but the way she said it was kind of aggressive like it was very like it was the tone of what how she said it it was not in a very nice tone and I but I don't think she was meaning to be that way so then um what happened Alex ends up saying in his confessional, the reason why he was like, liked Summer is because she seemed lucid and light, but not so much now. And I'm like, then that's how you know something's wrong. Why don't you ask the girl, what's up with her, okay? So then she goes into the room where Noel, Bria, and Shanice are, and she's just kind of like, what happened? And then like, they're, they go back and forth. Bria and her kind of get into it. And like, Summer is like, I don't know. Like, you know, I said, I'm sorry. Cause I don't know. But then she feels like the ladies are, the girls were like laughing at her because they were all kind of la like, they were all doing something. Nobody was really paying attention to each other. So Summer felt like they was laughing at her. So she was like, you know what? F this. And she leaves. So then Noel was like, I'm not laughing at her. So then Bria's like, Bria and Noel, no, Bria and Summer go into the Jordan and Summer's room and they're trying to talk. And Noel's like, Summer, you know, I wasn't laughing at you. And she's like, we're good, Noel. And she's like, no, you know, I wasn't laughing at you. Like, what's wrong? And so Bria's like, yeah, Bria's like, yeah, Summer, I can tell something's wrong with you. And then Bria, Summer starts to get like real emotional and that she was like, she said something about like y'all's friendship. And so then Bria was like, well, you're really close to Jordan and Preston. And then Summer's like, well, it's not, it's not that great to be in. And we end up giving this scene of, um, what's her name? Summer in her confessional where she pretty much says that she's jealous of how light and fun Noelle, Summer, and Bria's relationship is. She's like, with Preston and Jordan, it's heavy, you know. Preston just lost his father. Jordan is dealing with her alopecia. And here I am. I don't want to be dumping my issues on anybody. And you could tell, like, she... And I think that's why I felt bad for her, even though I think she was doing too much, is like... She, you could tell that she's overwhelmed with all this emotion that's inside her. You could tell that like she wants to really like unleash on somebody. And that's why I say, girl, you need a therapist. Pay somebody that they can take all of that. And she just wants to say like how she feels and what she's going through. But she's afraid to tell somebody that. So then they were like, come on, Bria. Like, come on, Summer. Let's just have a conversation. So she sat down on the floor and she's like, they go back in this shy, um, Shanice's room mind you Shanice is in the bed just eating chips like not really invested in what's going on with um Summer and so she's sitting on the floor and Summer pretty much says you know I thought we were done I apologize I said I was wrong for what I did but then it just feels like it keeps going and then Bria was like I like she was like I'm tired of being blamed for things I haven't done like I don't do to anybody and then Summer's like but I have your back though and Bria's like no you don't and then Summer's like well how like how do I not have your back though and then Summer's like Bria's like I don't want to have this conversation with you Summer so then Summer gets upset and then Noelle's like Summer calm down sit down and she's like hug hugging on to uh Summer and Summer's like Noelle stop touching me she was like let me like let me go and then she pushes Noelle which I'm like Summer you got to stop doing that before you re meet the right one they pop you in the face and so she was like you you happy now I pushed her okay and then she's like F you calls um Shanice and Bria you know B-I-T-C-H's and then Bria's like I'm not even mad because I can tell she's drunk, but you can tell that Summer's like having a, a a breakdown, like a meltdown, and so she's running through the house, and then you hear Noel like Summer, 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 no, like come here, come here, and Summer's just like no, 
And she's like running through the house and everyone's like, girl, you guys supposedly supposed to be like her friend, Jordan, pretending to hide, not even trying to make sure the girl's okay. Like if I saw my friend having a moment, I'd be like, girl, what's going on? Like, Noel, what's up? Like, what's good? And so she gets mad. And then you, the last scene we see is her, of her like smacking that box away because she's so upset. And then we see... um we see <laughs> Bria and Shanice being scary because Shanice was like, oh, she going to beat your ass. And Bria was like, no. And she was like, Shanice like, girl, no, Summer can beat your ass. So Bria runs into Shanice's bathroom. And Shanice crawls off the bed and closes the door. And I said, what in the chaos? What in the chaos? But honestly, like I said, Summer needs therapy. Like I like like I said on my thumbnail, I really do hope that she watches this season back and realize that like she needs to talk to somebody. She needs to f talk to someone that can help her process her feelings and really help her unpack the things that she's dealt with as, as a child, because that is a lot to carry around. Like that's a lot to burden yourself with when it's like, it's not your fault entirely. Like you are a kid. Like you like, you know, the things you do as an adult are your fault, but as a child, like you were a kid, like you were a kid being passed around and cause your mama is an addict. Like you didn't do anything wrong. Like, so yeah, I just, I, cause even though I felt like she was doing too much running around the house, cause it was a clear like sign, like she wanted attention, but also she just wanted someone to listen. And maybe that's why Noelle is good for her. But Noelle was getting on my nerves. I'm not going to lie because she was chasing after summer. And I'm like, if the girl tells you don't touch her, like leave her alone, leave her alone. Like let her have this meltdown by herself. And maybe she can come back when she's more like, in, in her like you know more in her right mind but right now she's drunk she's sad she's angry she's overwhelmed with life she just needs to be alone she needs to be alone but they ended it with like to be continued so I'm wondering if we're gonna see like Summer actually tell Noelle what she's going through and like how she feels hopefully she does Hopefully she tells her like, girl, this is happening. This is happening. I feel like I can't talk to nobody. And they have a moment. I mean, we can only hope. We can only hope. But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in them comments below. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces. Deuces.